Dan Gilkerson, I am lead creative here at Company 119, and we're very, very glad that you can join us today. Now, if you watch the Coffee Cup very often, you know that most of what we talk about on the Coffee Cup, actually everything we talk about on the Coffee Cup goes back to data and analytics. That's where everything starts. We talk about a few main things. You got to start with personas and knowing who you're marketing to, and then you have to know the data that you have in order to know how to present your content. Um, in the marketing world, what happens a lot of times is you have this kind of conflict or butting of heads between people that collect data and analyze data and people that create content. And Forbes magazine wrote a really cool blog that they put out today. Virtual assistant, John, can you show them the blog? So this is from Forbes magazine. I love the content from Forbes. It's really timely. I really love what they put together, but they put together some content for us talking about a couple of myths that need to be debunked in terms of matching creativity with data. The first myth is that data stifles creativity. I think as a creative person, and keep in mind, I'm a content writer or started out as a content writer here with Company 119. Um, you know, I wanted to write very creative pieces. I wanted blogs that were, you know, they sounded more like a book than just something that you read on a website. I really wanted to tell stories. And I had all these ideas of what I was going to write. And then I would look at the data and I'd realize that the things I was about to write didn't have much to do with what people were coming to our site to see. So I had to rethink things a little bit. Doesn't mean that I wasn't able to be creative, just means that I had to get more creative and find different ways of telling that story. The way that um, Forbes lists it in this article, the way that they relate it in this article, I think is very intriguing. They said, listen, every artist would love to have a three foot by five foot canvas, a big giant canvas to paint on, that would be great. But if somebody came to you with an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas and said paint a masterpiece and, and gave you the tools to do it, most artists wouldn't look at that as, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do this. What am I gonna? They would look at that and say, all right, that sounds cool. That's a different challenge. I would really like to do that. Um, by the same notion, if they gave you a hundred different colors to work with, right? and gave you all this different paint to work with and you're, and you're creating a masterpiece, that might work for some artists. But then some artists might like the challenge of just working with three or four colors. They might say, you only get three or four to work with, but you have to make something just as beautiful and just as creative with just these colors. There's a lot of artists that would look at that and say, that's gonna bring out some of my best work. That's the way you look at it when you're creating content for your website, for your social media. You have to look at that data. You might not be able to talk about all of these different subjects, you might only have a few different things that you need to target and highlight because that's going to do the most for the site and do the most to get you business. But if you could just take those few subjects, for example, those few keywords, those few key pieces of data and create around those and create a masterpiece, then it can still be a great way to be creative. You can still find a lot of outlets for your creativity and tell stories and do all of those great things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that data stifles your creativity. In fact, they just help you find creativity that you didn't know was there. The second point that they make here is a lot of people think that data scientists aren't creative. That's very funny to me because if you know anybody that's scientific minded, yes, they're into numbers and yes, they're into uh, analytics and, and statistics and things of that nature, but they're still very creative people and they can really help bring the creativity out of you because they can see things that you can't. Um, there was an example that Forbes used talking about creating a video game and there might be some um, casual gamers, right? You've made a video game and you think it's really going to appeal to casual gamers. So you're going to write all this content out to casual gamers, but your data analytics scientists might find out, hey, there's also some people that aren't really playing the games that are just kind of watching the games that this might really appeal to. So if you can convert them from watchers to gamers, you might have even more success. So the data, the data scientists might even see things you don't see and again foster that creativity out of you to speak to some people you didn't know you were going to speak to so i think the myth that people that are into numbers that are into the science of numbers that are into the science of content can't be creative that's really a myth that we need to debunk right now. They're very creative people. They're just in a different way. So when you merge that number creativity with your word creativity and content creativity and put those two worlds together, you can create content for your site that simply can't be matched. So you just learned about uh, more about matching analytics and creativity before you finished your first cup of coffee than your competition will all day. Thanks for joining us.